Dribble, and that's transition, getting it from that paint all the way to the other end and making an explosive move. So that's a key indication that Trayvon is uh, feeling pretty good on that ankle. That bad ankle forced him to miss two games in mid-February. But he's averaged close to 19 points since in six games. Had a 40-point game, Jimmy, against Cincinnati. And he was letting it go. I mean, on and, you know, in a big rivalry game like that, physical nature to be able to be zoned in like that. He did it inside, getting to the basket, knocking down jump shots, step backs. He, he, he put his complete game on display. All Big East first team, Trey Blewett. And he willed his team to victory last night. Now Sean O'Mara. And I tell you, Sean O'Mara has really been doing a great job. He had 10 and four rebounds in 21 minutes yesterday against Buffalo. We tournament to play back to back games. You need the others to be able to step up. We talked about Malcolm Bernard stepping up, O'Mara stepping up. The same thing can be said on Clayton's end as well. Rush that shot. Game tied at five. Makura passes up. No, he takes the three, and it's good. That's what you want from J.P. Makura. He had eight last night, didn't shoot it well, and didn't take enough shots. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing, he can miss 20 in a row. It, it doesn't matter, but J.P. is still going to have the confidence that the next shot is going in. Knocked out of his hands by Gordon. He gets it again. Skip back. Huh. With space. In and out. Good. Makura quick fight. And again, J.P. Makura. Let it go to J.P. I'm telling you, you love it that he has a short memory, man. He's going to let it go. 8 on one For the Musketeers. Back there, Pass knocked away. And rebounded by Malcolm Bernard. Malcolm Bernard is a blue guy. He does, a little, he does everything well. The little thing. Yeah, he's not going to do anything, a lot of things great. And he throws it away. Yeah, just will be giving him some love. But J.P. McCura off to a good start. Hey, listen. Some guys just have extreme confidence that everything is going in. That explains J.P. McCura.
Tournament on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. 11 to 5. Xavier leading Creighton here in the first half. Download the new Fox Sports VR mobile app to live stream today's game in virtual reality presented by Jeep. It's as if you're watching from a VIP suite in the arena. Download the app from iTunes, Google Play, or the Oculus Store. No VR glasses required. And according to Stuart Mandel, here are the conferences with five plus bids. Wow, ACC, Big Ten, Big East. You figured that SEC, but this is one of those years, guys, where the mid-majors are not as strong, so you're going to get more teams that are on the cusp from the bigger leagues. ACC was talking about 11 at one point. And how about the Big, big East? 70% of the teams get in. That says a lot. That is an awesome statistic for the conference. Clement in the game now, a point guard for Creighton. Clement's time on the floor extended with the knee injury to Mo Watson. Now Foster a three and hits. Marcus Foster, a prolific scorer. He's their leader in scoring at 18 a game, a unanimous All Big East first team. Yeah, big body, big heart, saw the mismatch, threw it right over the top. And Ed Corbett calling a foul on the right side. John Gaffney, Ed Corbett, Ryan O'Connor are your officials this evening. And that foul called on Hanson, his first. Good. Guarded by Clement. Lewis. Foster picks him up. Tough guard for two scores. Facing each other today. Akira has hit two threes early. Akira frees himself with the triple. Romero with the offensive rebound. Makura again for three. And Jody hits it. J.P. Makura didn't attempt a three-pointer yesterday. First time that's happened since last season. Yeah, he's going to make up for it tonight. He's got three already. <laughs> but how about Romero making things happen? Offensive rebound. Foster inside the wheel. Ah! And he's fouled. I know you like a guy like Marcus Foster, and I know you like a guy like J.P. McCoy. Oh, without no doubt, because he has no fear. Sometimes he may have you scratching his head, your head, at some of the shots he takes, but when he's down and fired up and locked in, he can do so many things for you offensively. McCure, he is somewhat of a character, so to speak. Somewhat? <laughs> you being nice. He is, but that's his personality, and that's the way he plays. So you know that going in when you recruit a guy like that, that he's going to be fiery. You have to rein him in every now and then. But that's the kind of player you want on your team because he has no fear. 14 and 9. Foster with four points. Blew it off the bottom. It's pro stuff, right, Jimmy? Well, you see how quick and decisive it was? He squared Kyrie Thomas up. Quick move off the bounce, able to pull right inside. That's a shot you can take. Now it's going to open up the drive for Trayvon Blue. Xavier playing his own now. Clement. Ten to shoot for Foster. Good kick. Kyrie Thomas rises. Kobe Hector had two hands on it. Blew it, spins out of trouble. And a foul call. That's when you're multifaceted offensively. You're a scoring threat from behind the three. You can drive it. Guys don't want to get beat off the dribble. Excellent footwork by Kyrie Thomas to kind of beat Blew it to the space. But Trayvon knew he wanted to get there and pull up for a nice little 16 foot jump shot. And Trayvon reminds me of you when you played at Ohio State, Jimmy. Nice guy off the court. He can be nasty out there. Right. And he has to be because guys are going to come at his neck all the time to go after him. And look at his body. He understood that because he reshaped who he was. And now that's allowed him to be more athletic. But it also provided him more stamina 
to be able to compete for a longer duration while he's on the court. And a travel violation on Bernard. That's his second turnover. 16 to 9. This is a series that dates back to 1938. Xavier leads it 13 to 11. The teams have split the regular season the last three years. This past season, each team won on the other team's home floor. Xavier beat Creighton in Omaha 82-80 on February 4th. Keep in mind, Creighton beat Xavier at Xavier the, the night or afternoon that Milwaukee got there. Now Foster on the fade. A brick rebounded by Gooden. Outlet blew it in the front court. Clement gets back. Blew it. Another jumper. And another basket. Trey Gooden. Warm to start this game. That ankle must be feeling good. It is. And you give both teams credit just when you lose a key component. It takes a while for you to adjust. And they both had some rough patches where they didn't look the same, but they kind of eased into it now and feeling more comfortable. Crawford muscles his way to the basket, tries to tip it in there. And a foul coming up on the rebound. Trayvon Floyd, one of the best at the mid-range game, and right there, you give him enough space to make you pay. The big question, who will join Villanova to play for the Big East Tournament Championship? Xavier or Creighton? We'll find out. All right, today's tournament stars, D.J. Wilson, 26-8-3 blocks in Michigan's upset of top-seeded Purdue in the Big Ten quarterfinals. Isaiah Briscoe had 20 in Kentucky's win over Georgia. And Shimmy Ola, Ola, Ojale, excuse mm -hmm. me, with 36-12 as the Mustangs defeat East Carolina in the quarterfinals of the American. 18-9, Xavier, let's go inside the huddle with Coach Big Buckets. You know what they want. Get a hand up and take that away, and then we need a physical blockout. Three of their points are a missed blockout. The guys, we can't afford these foolish fouls. All the way away from the basket. We get we have two fouls 94 feet away from the basket of our four. Those are those are unintelligent plays. Well, real simple. Contest a shot, then block out. We can get the rebound. Mentally, 
that's not committed. Stupid foul, not, you know, 25, 26 feet away from the uh, from the basket. Let's be smart. Lewitt and Makura have the last 15 points for Xavier. Let's see if they go down low to Amara. He was really successful down there yesterday. Here he is. The dribble and he dribbles it out of bounds. But that was the idea. When Chris Mack and Xavier got back in the game, they said, let's get the ball on the box. Well, it's a little bit different today because of Justin Patton. And that time you see Amara, as he caught and gathered, right out of his periphery, he saw Pat, And that's what caused him to, you know, kind of turn the ball over. So that's the presence that Pat had. Amara out of the game. Tyreek Jones replaces him, a freshman from Connecticut for Xavier. Posting up on blue. He's got a height advantage if they can get it to him. Davion Mintz looks the other way. Patton just begging for the ball. Baseline Isaiah Zierdy. And hits a jump shot. I tell you what, though, Trayvon Blue did an excellent job of not allowing Patton to just feel him and seal him inside to get the ball. But then that opened up Zierdy in the corner. 15 foot of good. Tyreek Jones with the offensive rebound. Jones kicks it out. Deflected into the backcourt. 22 to shoot. And a foul on Mintz. When you have a mismatch inside, you have to be able to be active and mobile. Watch Trayvon Blue it there, just moving around, not allowing Patton to fill his body. And now, with the help of Tyreek, you leave open. Zero, you got to be more aware of who's in the corner and who to help off of. Creighton already with five team fouls. Isaac Gates with the ball in the game. He's a sharpshooter from distance. Blue. Shaking both. Step back. And a foul coming up against the Musketeers. And that foul called on Tyree Jones is first. Jones had a great game against Creighton. In Omaha, he was 8 of 8 from the field, 16 points for career high. Tyree Thomas, 19 yesterday. Zero. Thomas finds an easy play. Well, the, the middle pick and roll is always harder to guard because you got spacing with shooters in the corner, and it's hard to rotate over. And Tyree Thomas with the quick decision to hit a rolling pack down the lane. Xavier is led by as many as nine. Good, now he goes right. Off the heel. Jones with the rebound. And stick back. He's strong. What? I mean, a pull. Look at him. <laughs> that young fella. And Took the tight end. Creighton turns it over. Here's Blue. And a whistle and foul. And that foul called inside. Talked about a gust spacing on the floor. Once you get in the middle here, where's the help going to come from? Because when you have outstanding shooters in the corner, all Patton has to do is set a brush screen, and Kyrie Thomas has to make the right play. Marcus Foster back in. Martin Crumple, a 6'9 forward freshman from Slovenia, also come in, coming in. It's a foul on Tyreek Jones. He's trying to gain position on Crumple. And sometimes you get penalized, and I used to hate this as a bigger, stronger guard. You get penalized because you are more physical. So he initiates the contact, and it might have been that little hook at the end, ever so slightly. And sometimes that strength can work against you. And he knows it. And Jones quickly out of the game as he picks up the second foul. 20 to 14. Tyreek Thomas inside. Oh. Bolton. Kaiser Gates got a hand on it, but they play on. Makura inside. Rashid Gaskin. And muscled it in. First basket of the game for Gaskin. Foster the other way. And it was. Does he get it? 
on the way down as he pitted against the glass. That's good block. Good block. Good block. Good block. From the other angle, it may have looked like he was going in, but how about the patience by McCure right here? You're talking about bully man and big boy basketball. She gassed that time for the shoulder and clear some space. So Marcus Foster at the line was in foul trouble last night. Only played 24 minutes, but did have 15 points. He's averaging the most points for a Blue Jay newcomer since Cyril Baptiste in 1969-70. You remember him? <laughs> no, no. I was born in 67, Jimmy. I'm old, but I'm not that old. I thought you was born in like 55. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in 70, so I know I don't know. Young <laughs> get old, Jimmy. Yeah, get hey, old. That's my plan. I plan to get as old as I can. That means I'm still here. 22 16. Inside, Gaston. Good catch. Yeah. And another foul. Looks like this will be on court. So Rashid Gaston from Warren, Ohio. And Gaston makes the first three things you need to know about Rashid Gaston, who transferred from Norfolk State. And here we go. If you can meet anyone, Bill Gates. He can secretly sing, and he hates Russell Sprouts. I'm with you on that, Rashid. Yeah, but also, what's up there is that his mother and aunt are the biggest critics, too. So when he's not playing tough, you got to hear it from those two. I'm sure that is not a pleasant <laughs> thing. And the ladies team up on you, 24-16. Kyrie Thomas, wide open. Miscommunication that time between Blue and uh, Gaston. And I like Thomas's patience offensively. Well, he's grown so much because it put him in a position once Watson went down. Now he's looked upon a score. And a traveling violation against the Musketeer. So his game is elevated. And think about it this like Mikel Bridges at Villanova. They both came in with the pedigree of being defensive stopper. Then their offensive games have now prospered and grown. Kyrie Thomas also Big East. Defensive player of the year with Mikael Bridges and Josh Hart. Foster for three. Gaston gives it up to Gooden. He's got Gates on the wing. Gates lets the jumper go. And an offensive foul on Gaston. His second. So O'Mara comes in for Gaston, who sits at the eight-minute mark with his second foul. Tyreek Jones, physical on the bench. She Gaston, physical on the bench. Now, they're going to have to adjust how they play to how the officials are calling the game once they re-enter the lineup. And a foul down low. And it looks like it'll go against the Musketeers. 24-18, back to the garden in a moment.
And welcome back to the Big East Tournament on FS1, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Gus Johnson, Jimmy Jackson with you. Lisa Byington on the sideline. Our score, 24-18. Xavier leading Creighton. And according to Stuart Mandel, our bracketologist, here are the number one seeds. Villanova, even though Kansas lost to TCU yesterday, North Carolina lost to Duke today, and the Zags. And the question about the Zags, strength of schedule, who have they really beaten? Kansas, you saw they lost. If Villanova wins, does that propel them to be the number one overall seed? Hmm. Twenty-four, eighteen. Five offensive rebounds for Xavier, resulting in eight second chance points. And if Villanova manages to play in the East, they'll play right here at Madison Square Garden if they make it to the regional. Thomas has that shot blocked. O'Mara and Gates combining. I went to the tournament at the Garden a few years back. What a fun event. Blew it. And he rattled it in. I can imagine just the, the feel. Mm. And you can just go this as a, like I said, basketball fan without a rooting interest and enjoy what the product you're going to see because it elevates so much more the intensity level once you're in the tournament. Now Patton. Foster facing drive. Nice! Thanks. Yeah, and Laura couldn't hold on. Finally knocked out the top. And then they say it's great in basketball. Last touch by the Musketeer. But that's an example right there with Trayvon Blewett reshaping his body. He was able to absorb the strong shoulder of Foster without really moving. Where maybe last year he would have been caught off balance. Foster had a clear uh, drive to the basket. Blewett heads to the bench. He has eight points. McCure back in. Pat in the box. Poster across the lane. Jump hook. Very good. And that's what I wanted to see, the patience. He always talked about a big man playing big, but that's an example. He spread out one dribble over his left shoulder. Easy jump hook inside. But that's the patient part that comes to get more comfortable. Back with six. Romero draws a double team. Gooden, open. And it's Quentin Gooden. His first basket of the game. And Xavier takes a nine-point lead. He can knock down that shot. That's going to open up so many more opportunities for him offensively. They want him to get a little bit more lift on his jump shot. He's such a great athlete. Zero, ten to shoot. Thomas driving, gets to the hole. Gooden clears it. Cure with the step, kicks it out. Gates. Oh, oh, oh. Quick outlet pass to Foster. Xavier back on the defense, though. Foster with the handle. And foul call on Marcus Foster. The hardest thing for a young postman to do is understand time, patience, and not to rush. And Patton, right there, showing all of it. Knowing he had a mismatch, the double, double team didn't come. Able to do it, knock it in, and talked about good. And a part of his game that he'll continue to improve when he's, when he's knocking down jump shots, guys. That'll open up, especially off the pick and roll for some other opportunities. Good, the true freshman was forced into action with Cura a three. But Edmund Sumner, Sumner blew out his knee. Baseline, Foster, and Cura. Nine points for Marcus Foster. Five minutes to play. First half, 29-23, Xavier. Cross court. Bernard finds O'Mara. Foster. O'Mara across the lane, and the left hand goes down. Created enough space with that bump to get that shot over. Extended arm to Patton. 31-23. Mintz, and that's kicked out of bounds by Gooden. When 
you not as athletic or have the height, you got to figure out a way to get your shot up. And Omir right here, enough space was created to get that left hand jump hook right over the top right there. Again, patience on this side as well. Foster gathering himself. Kyrie Thomas deep in the corner. And it's how he this kid's game, Jim. He can fall. I said it from the beginning when I watched him play during the course of the year that he was the key to this Creighton team because he does so many things very well outside of just being an outstanding defensive player. His offensive game has picked up. Gooden feeds him out. Quick turn, off pack, dips inside the first layup. Big fella with the sweet feet. Between the toes, on the baseline. Oh, up and under. O'Meara, tricky. He has four. Cole Huff hasn't gotten the shot recently. Takes it. But you, uh, not, uh, I told you this before. Pick some numbers for me next week <laughs> for the Mega Mills. I told you this before. You refused to do it. Help a brother out. It's out. Oh, good with a pan. Oh, yeah. And the freshman banks it down. He loves to go left. Makes the other way. To the bucket. <laughs> 35-29, and an offensive foul called against Xavier. <laughs> 255 to play in the first half. 35-29, Xavier, one spot left. The winner to advance to the tournament championship game to take on the national champions. Say that last line again. Yeah, I know, he's sitting next to me. I, I am hitting three bullet points, right? Back in New York City, Xavier in their fourth straight Big East Tournament semifinal, up six, under three to go. Rob Stone back here with you. Coming up on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report, see how Josh Hart won it in thrilling fashion earlier for Villanova. Did another potential number one overall seed fall tonight and an SEC OT upset. Jim Gus, we'll see you at the break. All right, Rob, thank you very much. 255 tonight. Trayvon Blue with a big first down. He 
is their star, what, Xavier. He's making it look easy. He's getting to a spot 15, 17 feet instead of forcing the situation, Gus. He's just pulling up for a simple jump shot. And that's being comfortable with who you are as a player, but also knowing that you don't always have to get into the basket or shoot a three. You can take that 15-footer all day. And you just wonder what the season or what could have been for Xavier if Edmund Sumner doesn't get hurt and right. injure his knee on this floor against St. John's. Foster the inbound. Edmund, Mintz, Huff, and Kyrie Thomas. Foster pulls up 15 footer. Short. And Trayvon Blue with the rebound. His third. The Xavier team had a stretch where they lost six in a row. A pure. But they rebounded final regular season game against DePaul. One in Chicago. Beat DePaul in the first round in this tournament. And then the scintillating victory over Butler yesterday. Huff. Looks like he's fouled on the elbow by Blue. No call. And it's amazing, too, when you've been struggling as a team. You just want to win. I don't care who you play against. And to be able to get those two wins, I think confidence-wise, allowed them to come in and beat Butler. Now for Bernard. Mintz, hard push into the front court. Drives to the back, get out of control, and an offensive foul. Well, where you, you saw that yesterday. Yeah, where are you going? I mean, a young player, one on three, put it back out. He's a freshman. With and without Edmund Sumner. Uh, this team much different. Well, look at the points. The turnovers are about the same, but the pace of play is different. But also the emotional impact. You know, six and six without something, but the exciting plays that he brings to the table, as you see Edmund right there, the high flying dunks, he gives you an added advantage mentally when he's on the court. And also, he can break down the defense oh. off the dribble. Blew it. Tough shot. McCure with the rebound. Hey. 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 Is there with the tip. Just hang around the fella inside, make yourself big. Big Sean with six points in the first half. Big Sean. <laughs> He's making moves. <laughs> He's making moves. He's making some nice music, too. So that's good. Back line help defense. 50 seconds of play in the first half. 37 to 29. The X-Men have played great basketball in this first half. Hector. And an offensive foul. Akira sliding in and taking the charge. And he took it too. He got the, the blunt of that contact. But how about him seeking out that... Hegner was going to roll, got his feet planted outside the arc, gave up his body. Justin Batten coming back in. I ain't going to lie to you, that was the first, <laughs> that was the first that takes the charge. Oh, you didn't like doing that? What? But you were a physical guy. Man, I like the <laughs> offense. I like to impart the physicality. <laughs> I hated doing taking charge drill. <laughs> About a seven second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Gooden takes his time. Blewett. Ten to shoot. To Bernard. To a curling with shot. No. Loose. Zierden with the rebound. 12 seconds to go. Isaiah Zierden. Finds Marcus Foster. He may play for one shot himself. Foster driving, spinning, in the lane, up the glass, and in. And that's the end of the first half. With the score, Xavier 37, Creighton 31. Seven Musketeers have scored. Makura with nine, blew it with eight.
If we didn't see right here, it looked like a little, since we're in the guard, a little Earl to Pearl Monroe with the spin. Inside giving Creighton a much needed basket, a little momentum going into halftime. Haven't played great, but still in shouting distance, only down six to the Xavier team who came out hot and hungry. Foster, beautiful move. Let's go to Leeson Byington with Chris Mack. Well, coach, your third game in, in three days, you go into the locker room with the lead. What are you satisfied with the most with your team here in the first half? Well, I think we're playing hard. Uh, you know, we gave up a few too many baskets in the last maybe eight minutes of the half, but, uh, you know, Creighton's really talented offensively. Uh, nobody's going to shut them out. And, uh, you know, they're, they're in a little bit more of a rhythm than they were last night. It's so the second game uh, on this floor. As a whole, how do you evaluate the the pace game and the possession game for you. I know McDermott you know wants to tire us down. I don't, I don't worry about all that stuff. I, I'm not an evaluator. That's that's for Let's Ken Palmer. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Guess. Thank you. Great and trail Providence by three at halftime yesterday. The quarterfinals came back and won. Blue Jays down by six. 37 to 31 the halftime score. Rob Stone, Steve Lavin, Donnie Marshall will be back with the G Grant Cherokee halftime report right after this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a nugget, my friend. Ship. One, two, three, four, five. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Stuart, it's Rob Stone. How are you, bud? Hello, Stuart. Good, Rob. How are you? Good, man. I don't know what we're asking you, but I hope one of them is uh, what the Carolina loss means. Okay. That is exactly what Kent came up with. Good. Philly. Bar Bardia. Oh my God. Well, I no, I didn't, but I'm glad I, I kind of mentioned something to Jay before. I'm like, you you snuck into the guard. He's like, no. Yeah, I'm like, that ain't my question, man.
Welcome back to New York City at FS1's continuing live coverage of the Big East Tournament. We welcome you to the Jeep Grand Cherokee at FS1 College Hoops. Halftime report, an early 8-0 run spurred on by J.P. Makura has your seventh seed, Xavier. Just 20 minutes away from their fourth straight win, they are up six at the break. Rob Stone, Steve Lavin, Donnie Marshall here with you. Three-point shooting hasn't normally been the real big theme and storyline for Xavier coming in to this game they shot only 33 percent last night they hit six three balls the night before it was five but here in the first 20 the three balls and the Musketeers are an early story lab we focus in on it on our Jeep Grand Cherokee highlights from the first half yeah the Musketeers just find a way to be successful tonight it's been their rebounding and three point shooting uh, the Cura comfortable from long distance Alert ball movement to find Makura, play through the hot hand, and um, just an impressive performance. How about nine different Musketeers with rebounds, 23 to 12, plus 11 on the boards, and that just speaks to the Musketeers' aggressiveness. It's really not like a Creighton team to have one offensive rebound. You know, we talk about Patton as big as he is. We, everyone is talking about how he's such a tremendous scorer. They get him involved. He's hard to guard. We've heard all that. But what about the other side of it? What about those extra effort plays? I think he's being challenged very tough by the bigs of Xavier. And we know Mac is going to figure something out for his team. I'm sorry, Coach Mac, not Chris Mac, but Greg McDermott, because he has to. His guys fight. They're athletic. But you can't just stand there and watch. Chris Max guys just jump over your back. They need you on the boards. Bottom line. You got to get in there. I don't Xavier, have any eligibility left. 11 Plus I don't want to take this suit off. When they hold the opposition to 65 points or less they're on track <laughs> to do that again here in semifinal number two. But when we return we flash back to tonight's first semifinal. Josh Hart once again with some late heroics sending Angel and Seton Hall home.
Grand Cherokee FS1 College Hoops Halftime Report. Donnie Marshall, Steve Lavin, Rob Stone back here with you at Madison Square Garden. Earlier tonight here live on FS1, it was a rematch of last year's Big East Tournament Championship game, a game won by Seton Hall over Villanova. It was a wild one. You see Seton Hall up one. Chris Jenkins misses. Josh Hart for the follow plus one to give them the two point lead but Seton Hall with the last gasp here guys. I think they were hurried by the extended pass inbounds and here Angel Delgado point blank was probably a little surprised he was that close. A heartbreaker championship game guys but on the wrong day. Over in Brooklyn the third meeting of the year between Carolina and Duke. Anybody want to block out Thea Pinson. VP. Ooh. VP, are you with me? Carolina down seven. Jay Tay. Has he put his name in the draft yet? Has he has he entered his name into the draft yet? yet? Can he? The fighting Coach K's move on. Vandy on the bubble. Trying to look for their second straight win over Florida. Various Hayes. We go to overtime. Jeff Roberson would get it. Stu Mandel telling us now that Vanderbilt is off to the NCAA tournament. Kentucky took care of Georgia earlier. How about Michigan continuing their winning ways in D.C.? They upset number one seed Purdue in overtime. You love what Minnesota's doing, Coach. Impressive. Biggest turnaround in college basketball. Little Rick Pitino, Jr., getting it done with the Gophers. Here at MSG, it's Xavier up six and now just 20 minutes away from their second ever Big East tournament title game.
37-31, Xavier on top of Creighton as we prepare to start the second half. Gus Johnson along with former player of the year at Ohio State, Jimmy Jackson. Jimmy, I thought that first half for Xavier was a, a very solid one. It was solid because they were, one, able to control tempo, two, kind of get in transition, get some easy things. But also, for me, they were able to win the battle of the paint. Right now, 12-8 to eight inside, so doing some good things as far as mixing and matching their offense to cater to what they need. All right, let's take a look at the Jeep Grand Cherokee first half stats. Well, again, field goal percentage for Xavier, 44%. How about the offensive rebounds and second chance points? Again, the little things deep inside the numbers that allow you to win close games. And the standouts in the first half. Blew it with eight. Makura hit three threes. Foster, 11, and Patton, nine. Let's go to Lisa. Gus, they hit us before we could hit them is the message that Greg McDermott told his Creighton team at halftime. The 23 to 12 rebounding advantage was the one stat that got under his skin. The 10 to 2 second chance points, the second stat that got under his skin. He is going to remain with Kyrie Thomas on Blewett, but he says we have to be a little bit more aggressive in the second half on him defensively. Gus? Thank you, Lisa. As we start the second half, Xavier with the basketball. Good now. Jump hook and it's rejected out of bounds by Justin Patton. That's what good shot blockers do. They anticipate where the play is going, and instead of staying married to Gaston, not able to come over, deny. Second block for Patton tonight. Points now for Trey Blue. He averages 18. And that's a tough step back because you're going to your right, which means now you've got to turn and square your shoulders up to the basket and shoot it. 39-31. Mentz up. Kyrie Thomas. Inside, ball deflected. Picked up by Patton. Nine to shoot. Patton almost tried to turn around jumper and air ball. That's the impatience right there. He kind of dribbled himself right into double and triple coverage instead of going back to the baseline. Blew it again. Here comes Mintz. He has to stay in control. He's got blinding speed. Foster spinning again, kicking. Huff takes it through. Good job. Well, they get him going. You put him on the same side with Pat, it makes it tough to kind of dig inside because you can't help off of Cole Huff. Cole Huff has nine, all threes. Gaston, guarded by Patton. Wants to use his strength against the taller Pat. Gooden, left hand dribble. Baseline. Gaston, no. Top of the off hey. How many seven footers you know can do that, guys? That'll get him high. Huh? huh? Justin Patton is a kid. He's a freshman from Omaha. They feel that he has the potential this year if he declares to be a top 10 pick. He's got a big decision to make. Putting again to the basket. Uses a strike and lays it in. And that's the athleticism you talked about in the first half with good neck, big body but able to finish and elevate over the big ball. And when he first got the starting job, he couldn't convert on shots like that, but now they're starting to drop for him. Kyrie Thomas robs it inside, Patton keeps it high and lays it in. The middle pick and roll once again, and with the big player, tell girls all the time, throw it to the basket. Don't throw a bounce pass, it's tough for him to catch and gather and finish. Excellent decision by Kyrie Thomas. And just like that, Creighton right back in. Nice look, Gooden to Gaston. And he'll throw it away. Bernard just couldn't hold on. That was a hot potato. How about your center? 
Trailing in the break. Three, no problem. I got you. And then the pick and roll. This is all this is just a slip screen. Just throw it to the basket and let those long arms go get it. Patton can hit the three-point shot. He's actually shooting 54% from downtown this year. Well, oh, that comes from being, being a guard. Kyrie Thomas. <laughs> And here come the Blue Jays. Creighton takes a one-point lead. 11 to two run to start the second half. This is what they did yesterday against Providence after being down by three at the break. Mercura to the bucket, left hand over the five. Xavier a little bit late in their rotation. Right here off the little drive, you're helping, but look how far they're below the free throw line. So when the ball swings around, McCure kind of inching his way out instead of closing out the space by Kyrie. JP McCure with three threes in the first half. Adds the first free throw. He now has 10 points. Make it 11. Xavier back up by one. Mintz picked up the second five. Mintz back to a pat and he lays it in. The spacing is excellent for Creighton. The movement, they're really decisive in their offensive set. Hence, they're getting some easy looks, especially on that pick and roll to the basket. Now Patton with 13. Good, a lot of dribbling here. Bernard turns. Gooden. Down the lane. Right here. Good. This kid's starting to really come on. We talked about him making, missing those shots early on, but it was a comfortability level that he didn't have. But now he has it, so now he's finishing those easy shots. Here's a kid that, as I mentioned yesterday, could be 225, 20 times, set a freshman record in the weight room. Marcus Foster, he's strong as well, and has touch. Look at him flexing as he comes down the floor. Which way's the beach, Jimmy? That way. <laughs> Which way? That way. 46 <laughs> 45. The winner who advanced to the Big East Tournament Championship game to take on Villanova. And five coming up against Drake. Prime example of red shirting a player who needs some development paying off as Pat dominating and good. Real comfortable, real strong, able to finish. Again, you're talking about which way the beach is? Mm, right there. <laughs> Creighton, Xavier. Toe to toe at the world's most famous arena. One of these teams will advance and play in the Big East Championship game.
The Big East Tournament on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Madison Square Garden, 15.02 to play in the second half of this semifinal game between Xavier and Creighton. As you take a look at the bracket, Villanova advancing as they came back to beat Seton Hall after being down by 11. Josh Hart turned out to be the hero, the Big East Conference Player of the Year with a double-double. The game came down to the final possession. Angel Delgado unable to convert at point break range and the national champion survived and advance. Right now though, Xavier seated seven. Creighton, number six. Five lead changes in the last a minute and 43 seconds. Yeah, how about Creighton coming out? Six for seven in the second half. Three for three from behind the arc. So offensively clicking coming out of the, the halftime. More focused. Good in the inbounder, O'Mara back on the floor. And Kyrie Thomas with the steal. He's got Huff trailing, along with Foster. Patton knocked away and stolen by Gooden. So he gave it up on one end and took it away on the other end. Bad passing angle. One time you got to take the ball further on the ring and then enter the ball in the post to Patton, who had a mismatch inside. Gooden takes a three. Clement back in for the first time in the second half. Run of the point. Mitts on the sideline. Patton gets to the bucket. Wow, what a catch and finish. Did you see that? The soft hands to tip it to himself to keep it in play. And then the gather so he doesn't travel a step out of bounds to finish. Largest lead of the game now for Creighton. Who trailed by six at halftime. Who trailed by three at halftime yesterday to Providence came back and won. Clear. And a reach and foul coming up on Foster. Some things you just can't teach in the soft, the touch, the gather, and then the ability to finish underneath. And again, it's the slip roll by having a shooter in the corner. Makura had to stay at home a little longer. That opened up the lane for that. Foster picked up the second foul. 48-45, great. Blue drives hard, foul. But so far, Patton's having a big game. Well, give the coaching staff a lot of credit. This young man was raw, he was pure, he played guard position before, and now he's learning really how to be a big man, so he can beat you in so many different ways. His game is continuing to expand, and they trust him a lot more than what we saw earlier in the season with his decision-making on the block. Boy, you just imagine how good he could be two to three years, you know what I mean? Ooh. We'd love to see him stay oh, in college, but selfishly, you can't nah. if you have an opportunity to get a good job right out of college. Well, Ed, well, that's what you go to college for, and if you're Coach McDermott, you love how fast he was able to progress, but you hate it too. That's because right. <laughs> that you know at the other end of the spectrum is that NBA scouts going to be calling, he's going to be gone. 11 points for Blewett. Kyrie Thomas right at the free throw line, knocked away from behind by McCure. Into the hands of Patton for the two-hand jam. 17 points for Justin Patton. He had six at that time. O'Mara guarded by Patton. Draws a double team. Somebody's open. O'Mara hands it off to Cure underneath. Oh, what a play by J.P. McCure. Didn't panic. 50 to 48. And Patton dribbles it off of his foot and out of bounds. Cure with the quick hands. Inside Kyrie, just a pity pat. Inside the Patton. Finishes with authority. And JP not padded, not panicking, tippy toeing. I see you, big fellow there, but you can't get it. 
I love it, you JP. Just creative. Lefty. Well, he's one of those kids that can hit all those tricky shots. He got that in his game. So unassuming when he looks, but a fiery competitor inside. Musketeers can tie it up right here or take the lead with a three. Here's their main man, Lewis, driving right. Bernard. Clement with the rebound. I'll tell you what, they're doing an excellent job in the second half of taking away the space from Trayvon. Crowding him, making him very uncomfortable. Tight quarters operator. Zero. Isaiah Zierden with two threes in this game. He has six off the bench. Largest lead of the game now. And the coolest thing about Isaiah Zierden is haircut. That's right. <laughs> He's rocking the beard as yeah. well. Timeout call by the Musketeers. The Wiley veteran, Isaiah Zierden. I'm here when you need me, knocking down a big time three. Love the haircut, the part on the side. One more time. Isaiah Zierden will take it. Knocking down Jays. Blue Jays up. Tomorrow, it's a Big East Tournament final on Fox. Who will hoist the hardware is the question. The Big East Tournament Championship tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Fox. And here's what the stars did tonight, Brunson, Jenkins, and Hart. Brunson and Hart able to get it in. Chris Jenkins struggled with his shot. He had good shots, though. Uh, not able to get to the post. They're going to need a big game out of him tomorrow. 53 to 48. 11.51 to go. Creighton has made nine in a row, five of them by Patton. Gates, Tyreek Jones, and J.P. McCure on the court for the X-Men. Inside, knocks him up, and an easy jam for Jones from McCure. Well, well executed play out of the timeout by Chris Mack, able to get Tyreek Jones underneath. 
Three-point game. It's a 2-3 zone. Basically, you're going to end up playing one-on-one -on -one right there. And, Cup and Huff able to recognize that. Knock in the three. Ten straight makes for Creighton. Good on the baseline. Cut off. Reverses. Hard down the lane with the left hand off the glass. Strong and in. This kid is awesome. He is going to be a sensational player for Chris Mack. Game is going back and forth. Makura inside with an easy pass and dunk. Tyreek Jones, say thank you very much. Xavier not going away. Trying to get it closer. 52-55. Tough drive, tough player. Once you're on patent, if you're down in here, dig your heels in. Don't put your arms up when he's backing you down. Be a fire plug. But once he's once he's out of the perimeter and he's running the sevens, stay with Patton. Stay under him. Stay under him. Tell your teammate, you're good. Keep guarding. We got it. We got to be tight. No personnel. Basically, what Chris Mack is talking about is not allowing Justin Patton to get deep post position. Meet him early, push him off the block. And when he's on the perimeter, you can't lose sight of him. You can't lose contact because you can destroy it to the rim and he's able to get to it. And our third member of the team, Lisa Byington has a little info for us. Greg McDermott telling his team we will break their will if we get a stop, a defensive stop, rebound, and push. Pace continues to be the emphasis in that Creighton huddle. Only a 3-0 fast break advantage here for the whole game. All right, 10-37 to play. Second half, 55-52. Here's Patton, who's been excellent in this second half. He has 17 points. Top of the arc, Huff contested. Now Gooden. And 
quick five. And I think that's Foster, and if it is, is it's third. It is. Great crowd, that's Foster, that is third. Fifteen foul against the Blue Jays. Xavier with no team fouls in the second half. How about great ten straight makes in the second half? Fifty-five, fifty-two. The winner to advance to the championship game to take on Villanova. Good and spinning and strong. Tyreek Jones. Basket interference, that one was about to drop down. And, and that's the part right there where Gooden had a shot when it got swung to him, not comfortable taking the jump shot, so he puts it on the deck, the deck and attacks, and Tyreek Jones, a little too frisky around the rim. He has it. Eight to shoot. Back there for a minute. Left hand shoot. Out of bounds. Xavier basketball. Yeah, that time, great execution, great cut. But Clement, a little off balance, not able to finish over the taller defenders inside. Defense that time for men. Even though Patton had him under control, was able still to come from behind. Knock it out of bounds. Huff out of the game. Hector back in. JP McCure guarded by Zier. Good spinner inside. Hands it off. Tyrese Jones. Those are two freshmen. They are the future for Xavier basketball. How about the awareness knowing that Pat was going to come over and try to block the shot? Tyreek making himself available. Tyreek Thomas with the box. 57 54. 10 points for Tyree Thomas. Good. Trying to create. Keeps it alive. McCure thinking about it. Yes! <laughs> McCure. Kyrie Thomas the other way. Now Zier to drive. Hey! In the hole. Left hand. Hey! Oh! Isaiah Zier with eight points off the bench. And there's a timeout on the floor. 7.51 to go. Breaking up 59-54. How about Isaiah Zierden? A little trickeration right here. Penetrating down the lane. Nice haircut, but even a better layup. Madison Square Garden, the Big East Tournament, 59-54. Creighton leads Xavier.
back to the Jeep. Big East Tournament on FS1, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Our score, 59 to 54, Creighton on top of Xavier. Let's, Let's go, Let's update go. our keys to success, Jim. Yeah, Xavier able to force nine turnovers for Creighton. Six points, but how about Creighton controlling the paint? Down by two, 22 points to nine. Xavier doing a good job of uh, moving the basketball, trying to find some opportunity. They got to get Trayvon Blue figure out ways to get him open, create some space, because he was a catalyst in the first half. Trayvon Blue has had an excellent game, 11 points. He has had eight at halftime. But he can score points in bunches. So Isaiah Zierden trying to complete the three-point play. And he does. Nine points for Zierden off the bench. Largest lead of the game for the Blue Jays. 60 to 54. Xavier led by as many as nine in the first half. Six at halftime. Blue Knocked out of his hand, saved it from going out of bounds. Good. And a blocking foul called against Creighton. And that's Patton's third. Tough call right here. Let's see if he gets outside the arc. The great rotation and great defense. They were able to keep it alive. And still, a little movement wasn't set. Leave it on that play, guys. Good. And that nice little pull up jump shot on the baseline. Let's develop that part of his game as well. Makura on the inbound. JP hits his 4 3 of the game. 16 points. The Creighton lead now only three. Marcus Foster ready to check back in. Eight on the shot clock for Patton. Hands it off, Kyrie Thomas open. And all with a rebound on a miss. And he leaves his feet and throws it away. Clement the other way. And a foul on McCure. Keep your eye on Jamie McCure right here. As a shooter, you know you're going to get open, so you just stay patient. You wait, you wait. Then you explode off of the screen. You got space open. Chris Mack is one of the best in the country of underneath out of bounds plays in order to get a shot. They're really good at executing that. 60 to 57. Marcus Foster now back in the game with the ball. Foster has 13 points. Hesitation to the hole off the glass and in. Sixty-two fifty-seven. Xavier having problems coming up with stops. Creighton shooting 53% from the field. Xavier, 46%. Makura again. JP, his fifth three. And we've got a two-point ball game. 19. The young man from Minnesota. Gary Thomas down the middle. Lost it. Bernard. Outlet. Blew it. Head of the field. Commit with an easy does it, son. And we're level at 62. Kyrie down the lane, the lob, and Patton lays it in. Well, I thought he was going to bring the house down on that, but excellent to stand on both ends of the court. The pace that play has picked up. 19 for Patton. Creighton back up by two. Winner to advance to the Big East Tournament Championship game. To take on the national champion for the Little Wildcats. Top of the arc, blow it. Commit, hustling for the rebound. 
smallest man on the floor. takes a one-point lead. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. There's nowhere on the court that J.P. McCure can't shoot from. How far is too far? I far it off of J.P. My goodness. J.P. McCure, as they say, he's got in the gym range. And guess who loved it? Bill Murray. Xavier with a one-point lead, 4.08 to go in the Big East Tournament semifinal. As you take a look at the game reset, only two team fouls against Xavier, Creighton with six. But J.P. Makura has been a difference maker in this game. Guys, the problem with guard J.P. Makura is you got to pick him up as soon as you get off the bus. But anywhere on the court, he's going to let it fly. I mean, and what happens, you end up extending your defense out so far. Now it opens up other lanes, but the confidence that he has in himself to just let it go. Six for 10, 22 points. Six for 10 behind the three point line. I mean, just let it go. His career high is 28 against Clemson earlier in the year. The Big East tournament record for threes is eight by Dana Barrows, the former Dana. Boston College star in 1989. Makura has six. Dana can let it go too. Thomas. They swing at the hop. Lament, not a threat to shoot it from deep. Thomas back with Lament, and he does. How about that? Well, he is a threat. Well, maybe, maybe you shouldn't do the Mega Man. No, I definitely shouldn't. Never mind. 
He had to make that just because he set it up for that. 67 65, first basket of the game. Puts Lament. Lament caught it for it inside, battling with Hector. And a travel on Gooden. We talked about the decision making, but here's a good decision here. Dribble drive, penetration, Clement right there in the corner. Take that, Gus Johnson. <laughs> We talked about down the stretch as far as good making decisions and a little antsy right there to try to get the ball inside. If it's not there, just swing it, swing it, and bring it back around. Maybe you can get it inside on the next try. 318 to go. Two-point ball game. Blue Jays leading. A six versus a seven. In the biggest tournament. Macanard with the steal. He's got the fuel with it. And a foul on the floor. And that will send Xavier to the line. Shoot one and one. Throw lazy pass right here by Clement. You gotta zip the ball and Malcolm Bernard able to get out of transition and get a foul call, get to the free throw line. Malcolm Bernard and one. Malcolm Bernard. His first trip to the line tonight. Justin Patton comes back in. And Hector heads to the bench. Rashid Gaston in now. And he replaces Kaiser Gates. Second free throw good. Fourth tie of the game, 67-67. We're in the mecca of basketball. Madison Square Garden. Here's Gooden. Both teams with two timeouts. Xavier in the bonus. Gooden driving. Off the glass, no. Break it out. Foster. Game tied. Foster, he'll pull up. Drives. Block. Blew it. Out of bounds. And Green will hold on. Trayvon Poole kind of laid back, allowing Foster to come to him, able to make the play on the block. Here's Foster for the lead. Got him. How do you lose it? Foster with 18. 70 to 67. Great. A birth in the Big East Tournament Championship game on the line. Great 12 of 19 from the three-point line. McCure, he has six threes. They got to keep looking for it. Gooden. Hands it off. Blue it. Drive. Step back, Jay. Bam. Big time ball play. Big break. Their lead got the one. Foster. He'll back it up on Gaston. He can take him off the box if he can get a step. for the freshman. 72 to 69. Here's Makura. Both teams breathing heavy. Good and 10 to shoot. Blew it. And he's five from behind. Trayvon Blewett going to his left, able to use that step back and clear some space. Then Justin Patton just hanging around the rim, just enough to get his fingertips on it. And Blewett misses the free throw. 48 seconds to go. And a whistle. The fouls again. And that's Bernard. Only the third team foul against Xavier. 
45.9 to go. Three-point game. Seventy-two to sixty-nine. Creighton leads Xavier with forty-five point nine seconds remaining, and the game reset. Xavier with one timeout. Creighton with two. Xavier though with fouls to give, and a possession arrow in the favor of Creighton. Strategy-wise, Jimmy, for both teams, what do they do? You remember we had the game in Creighton when Creighton had a lot of fouls to give, and they forced Xavier to get the ball inbounds, and they had issues struggling. Let's see if Creighton does the same thing. I mean, Xavier does the same thing. Try to go for the steal. If not, foul. Make him take it out of bounds again to see if they can create some turnovers on this side of the court. Isaiah Zierden in the game now. He finds Huff. And Huff is fouled. Yeah, Chris Mack is talking about doing it again to see if you can force a turnover. It's tough to get the ball in bounds right here in this situation. A longer. Kaiser Gates to see if you can get a steal on the inbound. They don't do it, Foster. Trying to keep it in his hands. Zero. Foster. And Xavier fouls. That's their fifth team foul. Great did a great job of spraying the court, but then Xavier wanted to foul early, but they couldn't get to him. 72-69, 32.4 to go. And another quick foul. And that's foul number six. One possession game, 72 to 69. 31.7 on the game clock. Terrible throw it in the back court. It could lead to a basket. Oh. Easy! We'll go and shoot one and one. You got all three fucking fouls! That's interesting. Only these teams, as good as they shoot from behind the arc at times, a sub 70% as a team free throw shooters. But Huff is an 85% free throw shooter. This is his first trip to the line this evening. Pull up and line, shooting one and one. And he's shooting one and one. Chris Mack's strategy pays off. What do you do? 72-69. 25 best shot seconds available. Go. Best shot available. Here's the guy. He's got six threes. Blew it. Step back for the tie. Yeah! And we're level at 72. 14 seconds to go. Foster. Nine seconds for the win. McCurrick takes a throw! And that's it! Marcus Foster! 
72 Creighton advances to the championship game. <laughs> tournament, conference tournament basketball. You can't script it, my friend. Oh, what a finish. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Two games back to back. I mean, Gus. Foster hits the three. And this one, the one to win it. Chris Mack. Heartbreak. Coach McDermott. <laughs> yes, sir. But right now, Hold on, folks. There may be a clock issue. They're looking at it. As you take a look at the final sequence. Ah. Did it start before Makura touched the ball? Once it's inbounded, though. Teams walking back into the locker rooms. 75-72, the final. Let's go to Lisa Byington. All right, well, Mr. Foster, walk me through that final shot. Uh, you know, I was just trying to take my time, and then I heard Coach Mack say we playing, so, you know, it's just something I practice all the time, you know. Big stage, I just want to step up from big for my teammates. And you did, really, in the final two minutes, you had another big three, you penetrated, you got the tip back from, from Pat, and you missed the shot, but it, it generated some offense. What is your mentality here down the stretch in this game in particular? You know, my teammates played big all night, and, you know, I felt I didn't play to my best ability, but I, down the stretch, I want to play to be my best, so I just want to help my teammates, and, you know, we all deserve this because we practiced so hard, we fought all summer, and we deserve to go to the championship, so I'm proud of our team. Defensively, though, you had to take on a charge from a Makura and a Blewett. How did you survive both of those scores here tonight?